Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. We have a bit of good news for a change. Uh, the latest poll results should bring a bit of joy into the hearts of many. It shows that the SNP are likely to lose up to 23 seats now. Uh, and that's up from the 21 or so they were expected to lose before. Uh, so things are obviously getting a lot worse for them. And of course, once you get the results next Friday's, uh, you know, next Friday we get the result of next Thursday's election, uh, things could be even better for those who want to see the end of the SNP. Now, of course, we're talking here about Westminster seats, not uh, at Holyrood, and that's still sort of two and a half years away. So we will still find that uh, the SNP will be causing havoc in Scotland for another two and a half years. But it is at least a move in the right direction. And of course, the important thing is if they don't win their, uh, their so-called magic majority in order to start having a conversation about independence, then it kind of sends the message to them that people don't want independence. And it's time for them to stop dealing that particular uh, sad, worn out, hackneyed uh, claim and start doing their day job. Anyway, we'll take a look at this, see what the figures are, see who's predicting what and where the seats may be won or lost. Here it goes. Now, we should preface it and say it is, of course, only a poll. And then ultimately, there's only one poll that matters. And that's the one that occurs on the day of the election. But it does give a snapshot and it does give a feeling of people's sort of intentions. Uh, and it won't make good reading for the SNP and it won't make good reading for Hamza Yousaf in particular. Uh, he knows his time is very limited. Uh, and that if he keeps losing and he keeps shown to be a loser, uh, then, you know, it may be a case of, oh, thank you very much for all you've done. Now bugger off and we'll get someone else in. Um, which would be uh, good news for Scotland, I think, because if you got someone in who was sensible, uh, although, hey, this is the SNP, it'd be hard pressed to find them. But anyway, we'll look at this. SNP to lose 23 seats at general election, according to new analysis, as the Tories are set for a fight back. Um, don't be expecting anything massive from the Tories here. It's just a few seats. But the problems pile up for Hamza Youssef as a new study predicts they will lose 23 seats when the country goes to the polls. But it's better news for Douglas Ross. He's the uh, leader of the Scottish Tories. Uh, anyway, the SNP group at Westminster is set to be almost halved at the next general election, according to new analysis. International strategy consultancy Stonehaven is predicting a Tory fight back north of the border, uh, with the northeast likely to be a key battleground. Well, who'd have thought that then, eh? You keep attacking the oil and uh, gas industry, and all of a sudden you lose support in the homeland of the oil and gas industry. Doesn't take a genius to realise that that is what's going to happen, does it? Uh, anyway, using cumulative, which is just as well because they don't have any geniuses in the SNP. Uh, anyway, using cumulative data, Stonehaven suggests the Nats will win 25 seats when the country next goes to the polls, way short of the 48 they won in 2019. Labour would be on 19, while the Tories would actually gain two seats in Gordon, Buchan and Eyre, and uh, the Carrick and Cumnock seats to give them eight in total, while the Lib Dems would take the remaining five. Now, that, of course, is more than half towards the opposition, that the, um, the SNP would have fewer than half the seats. Now, they've been claiming, the SNP, that if they got over half the seats, that would be a mandate for independence. Of course it isn't. It's a load of rubbish. Uh, anyway, uh, it also found that in a number of other seats, Argyle, Butte and Lochaber South, Perth and Kinrosha and Angus and Perthshire, Glens, Mr Glens, the Scottish Conservatives are within striking distance of defeating sitting SNP MPs. So it wouldn't take much of a swing for the Tories to nab a few more seats from the SNPs. And of course, as time goes on, as the truth comes out, as things are revealed, and as the policies of failure continue, that will increasingly be more likely. Because it may not be that people will swap from SNP to Tories, but it may well be that they just don't bother voting for the SNP. And if the Tory vote holds, then of course they could snatch a few seats. Uh, and it doesn't take many. And you never know. I mean, the SNP could be uh, in deep, deep trouble. Uh, it is another blow to Hamza Yousaf. My God, that man is inflatable. He's had that many blows. 
uh, after the SNP suffered several council by-election defeats and crippling election predictions at the hands of Labour. Yeah, I mean, they've lost a load so far. And of course, like I say, you've got Thursday. That should be, if anything goes according to plan, another massive defeat for them. Uh, it also means they would fall well short of the majority of seats many Nats are hoping for that could trigger the Skexit negotiations. Never in a million years is that going to happen. Even if they got the majority of seats, it still wouldn't count as a mandate. Anyway, a Carrick and Cumnock win for the Tories would follow their recent council win in the constituency where the Nats were beaten in Girvan and South Carrick. The overall picture for the Conservative Party is significant losses across the UK, echoing long-standing predictions of a Labour resurgence. And Stonehaven puts the Tories at an overall loss of 170 seats across the UK. And I'd be surprised if that's all. Um, because they are just... I mean, the trouble is, they're bad. They are really bad. They are. This is a Tory party without a direction, without uh, understanding of what it actually means to be Tory. They're just turning into Labour. They're trying to be politically correct. They're trying to push tax up because they think it's helping. Mismanagement of the economy. All sorts of things going on. They're not really concentrating on their job. But they've run out of ideas. But then you look at the Labour Party, you think, oh, they've got, they're even worse. You know, Lib Dems, no chance, no hope. It's what you're left with. It, it's just a joke. British politics is a joke. There's no talent left. Uh, anyway, meanwhile, a number of heated selection battles are to take place for the Nationalists. And of course, they're fighting now. The, the civil war in the SNP, even down at sort of at selection level, uh, is quite ruthless and bloodthirsty. And you've got several that we're commenting on, uh, you know, sort of currently uh, most noticeably the, uh, the Lisa Cameron one. But that's not, you know, that's not the only one. Uh, two front, be front bench MPs are set to challenge each other for Glasgow East, with the former leadership contender Alison Thewlis taking on David Linden, who is, I believe, the cousin uh, of Jordan Linden, who is the sex pest councillor in South, uh, sorry, North Lanarkshire. Uh, anyway, so you just want to hope it doesn't run in the family, you know what I'm saying? It probably doesn't, but you know, you can't, you can't assume anything. Uh, former Westminster Chief Whip Brendan O'Hara, the thug, you know, uh, the, what they call him, the brute in a suit, uh, is facing a challenge from Helensborough Councillor Math Scamp Campbell Sturgis in the new Argyle Butte and Lochaber South constituency. Uh, and you want to hope that O'Hara's out, because I don't know anything about Campbell Sturgis, but he's got to be better than O'Hara and certainly less obnoxious. Uh, earlier in the week revealed a tactical voting plan from Unionists as Scotland Matters, who identified 40 potential seats where the Nats can be um, defeated if the people vote tactically. In other words, if you know your man or woman isn't going to win, vote for whoever's likely to win that isn't the SNP and wipe them out. You can wipe them right out. Uh, it hopes the Unionist parties can win back 24 seats from 2017 that were lost in 2019 and 17 additional seats where the SNP does not enjoy a majority. And it would be joyous to see one and all. It's getting closer. The election's getting closer. Things are getting tight. And uh, I think it's going to be one of those nights where everyone will be sitting up and watching the results as they come in um, and just seeing how bad it's going to be for Britain. Whoever gets in, that's really bad, isn't it? It doesn't matter who wins the next election. We're all buggered. But it would be nice to see the SNP handed their asses. Anyway, I'll stop there, come up, thank, and we'll round off the video. So I do like that. I do like the idea that they'll, uh, they, they could be wiped out. They won't be wiped out completely, of course, but they could be, I mean... Well, they call it culling the herd. I mean, you could be really bringing these people down to earth with a crash. And if you could get the SNP contingent down from like 48 a couple of years ago down to something like 15 or 16, uh, it would make them a lot less cocky. Uh, it would make them a lot more desperate. And the likes, of course, of Beryl Flynn down in Westminster would have a much smaller grouping. He'd become less important. And it does mean, of course, being smaller, they get less of the old uh, list money that they get from Parliament uh, and that is not a good thing they need that money to keep their party going uh, and so if they can get wiped out like that then um, that would seriously damage their finances to a massive extent so the more seats you can take off from people 
the better. Anyway, I shall round off there. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you'll hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel. Do hit the like button. That really helps as well. And until next time, stay safe, stay well, and vote, vote, vote. Do not waste a vote. Do not waste an opportunity. Get out there and vote for anyone, but not them. Bye.